What's up everyone, Jeremy here from MTG Headquarters, bringing you a standard deck tech. For those of you that watch me on stream at twitch.tv slash MTG Headquarters, you know that I've been piloting a new build. It is the most popular deck played in my house, but currently, that's, I mean, that's only currently. <laughs> uh, hopefully, uh, you guys might have some fun with Beard Forest 1, a standard theme deck that is actually competitive. Um, all the creatures in this deck don a beard, and uh, it's kind of a combination of things that are going on out there. It's This is version 1.0, so it's a work in progress. Let me go through the, the spells, then creatures, then land, then sideboard, and then I'll share a little bit about what's currently working in this deck and where I'm struggling. So the spell package is basically a main board, two disdainful strokes for uh, most often siege rhinos. Uh, the deck has a couple different win conditions. You can burn someone out. Uh, you can, so there's like the early game with burn, late game with creatures. Um, so two disdainful stroke, four lightning strike, four magma jet. Scry is extremely important in this deck. Um, and a lot of people are down on, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. So then we've got four stoke the flames. I'm very excited for the new FNM promo one to come out. That'll be a, a pretty rad card to have in this deck. And that's really your creature or your spell package. It's basically just your standard burn package, whatever's in standard currently. Um, the creature base is four spell heart chimera and spell heart chimera. This creature is um, effective in several ways. It is a bearded goat, so obviously it, it's flavorful, but also it, it slides under disdainful stroke with a cost of three, and with such a large both removal and um, counter magic package, once you see the sideboard, it can be very large. It's very often a three or four power flying creature, which uh, you only need to hit them a couple times with that uh, when you combine it with the burn package and you just flat out win the game. And we've got uh, four Savage Knuckle Blade, obviously. Uh, two Perforos. Um, he's interchangeable right now. He's uh, an up in the air. Uh, if I find a reasonable, I may even play like Faded Conflagration in main deck. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm playing around with a couple different things. Um, two Xenagos, the Planeswalker. Then we've got four Prognostic Sphinx. Now, this this uh, creature is definitely the, how do I say, like, it's the unsung hero of this deck. Between Prognostic Sphinx, I win more games with Prognostic Sphinx and Spellheart Chimera than anything else. Um, these other cards are kind of um, alternate win conditions or, you know, allow for some in-game strategy changes. But Prognostic Sphinx is very difficult to deal with once it's on the table, and uh, once you start scrying, it, I mean, you can just get whatever you need very quickly. They can't remove it very easily. Um, it's, it's just very difficult to deal with. It blocks Siege Rhino, which is a very, very, very important thing um, in the five drop spot. Uh, and we have three Sarkin, the Dragon Speaker. Two Kyranos, God of Storms. Uh, very good card. Um, it's actually quite easy to activate if you are trying to play like the creature route. So like Savage Knuckle Blade into um, maybe like a Spellheart Chimera into Prognostic Sphinx or Kyranos. You, know, you can get it activated super quick. There's a ton of devotion kind of just in this deck by the nature of the beast. Um, and then the top of the the uh, food chain, so to speak, in this deck is two Surak Dragon Claw. Very good against counter magic. Again, another thing that can deal with Siege Rhino, and I keep mentioning Siege Rhino, but that's the issue. Um, that is an issue in standard. You must deal with Siege Rhino. If you cannot deal with Siege Rhino, you cannot win consistently. So I don't have anything that can burn it out in the main deck. I do have some things in the cyber that I'll go through in a second. Um, the land base, pretty simple. And you know, shout out to the folks on stream. We built this one together. And uh, we've piloted it, I, I think in like maybe, in 10 matches, I'd say it's, it's you know, a 60% winner. Um, 
And I'll go into the biggest weakness of this deck in a moment. So two standard forest, uh, three bivouacs, three islands, three mana confluence, three mountain, one temple of abandon, three temple of epiphany, two temple of mystery, three wooded foothills. Uh, you need enough basics in here to fetch with your fetch land, so that's why I'm playing three, um, kind of the three mountains, five total basics that I can fetch with it. Um, let's go to the sideboard. So this is definitely in flux. One of the biggest problems this deck has is it can't deal with big creatures once they're, once they're on the board. So like, I can race them, which is often the path I take. Um, I can sometimes block them with things like Surik, or I can chump block with the Xenagos, just keep pumping out chump blockers, um, things like that. But uh, I have a lot of problems when the board gets clogged. I have no, no, no good charms to really remove anything. Um, charms are instant spells, so I'll definitely take your suggestions. Here's what I have in the sideboard, and I'll tell you how I use it. So there's two Disdainful Stroke, so we can take it up to a four of. If I'm playing a control deck, uh, I definitely bring this out because late game, you can get into some trouble where you have somebody down to just their final two or three life, but you know they're holding a counter spell or a cancel in their hand, negate or something in their hand, so you have to be able to counter their counter. Played a really long match against a control deck last night on stream that we ended up losing, um, but uh, it, I thought it was pretty fairly matched. If I would have had the early removal or the early uh, uh, creatures in my opening opening hand, I probably would have been fine. Uh, two to San Stroke, three negate again to deal with control. Basically, I don't really care about removal. You know, people removing my creatures. What I don't like is uh, I keep this kind of stuff for villainous wealth, which is definitely a thing at least with the online with MTGO meta and this deck is very well equipped to deal with villainous wealth, uh, but you have to board it in. You can't, you really can't let them cast it because they're gonna play out like a progno one of my prognostic sphinxes and a savage knuckle blade. And like I said, I can't, I don't have anything in this deck to deal with stuff once it hits the board. So I have to be able to counter it early. So um, for like Rabble Master or, um, you know, decks like that, I've got Anger of the Gods. Um, I find myself, Boarding this in not very often. I don't really care about Ra this deck. Doesn't really care about Rabble Master because I can outburn someone and Spellheart Chimera gets really big and just um, you know I don't have real problems with aggro v aggro. This is probably more like um, a mid range deck, but it but the sideboard can kind of morph it into whatever it needs to be. So I've got four Anger of the Gods, but I need to get something to remove things once they hit the board. Now, if I went to a 4 of and Faded Conflagration, uh, that would be okay because I don't really care about them gaining the 3 life from Siege Rhino because um, I've got such a great late game with Surik and, and um, Speller Chimera, Savage Knuckleblade, Sarkin. I don't care about them going up in life. What I do care about is having to deal with taking 4 to the dome every turn, uh, especially with a lot of self-damaging lands and things like that. Um, I'm running two Mind Swipe uh, for funsies, just because I like to, whenever I cast it, I like to proclaim, Mind Swipe! But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And then I threw two Teamer Charms in here last night, and I didn't get into a game where I could have boarded them in. I, I'm, my thought here was, okay, well, it's a counter spell, and um, it is a kind of removal, in that, um, you know, it's first ability, basically uh, when cast on just about any of my creatures can deal with a Siege Rhino or another large creature, Pelucranos, things like that. Uh, but once they hit the, once they hit the board, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't go so well for me. So a couple things I'm thinking of is maybe just like four of Crater's Claws in, in the main board or two Crater's Claws in the main board instead of Perforos and then two more in the sideboard uh, to burn out large creatures if I have to or to accelerate the clock, right? 
that doesn't help me those those cards don't help me in the control matchup right now which is still kind of dicey um if i board in well and i keep disdainful stroke up uh against control it does okay like i played a really good just got control build last night and, and i think this this deck matched up well i lost but i didn't just get blown out you know i i made a, a pretty good effort and i think had the cards have just flowed a little differently i probably had a good chance of beating him or her um but this is beard force one version 1.0 uh flavor win suggestions from me in the comments down below would be awesome and thoughts about how to deal with uh or things to consider for the sideboard i've considered i mean i think i have enough counter magic in there but i could take out obviously like mind swipe and teamer charm so there's like four available spots in the sideboard and i'm also thinking about dropping peripheral so that's two main deck spots and i would like to match up better against abzan i mean abzan and control um i i can i guess control is probably the bigger matchup problem because in Abzan, I can't out, I am able I am able to outrace them, and I've done it many times. Um, I match up very well against Abzan, but if they get a couple Siege Rhinos out and I didn't have to stay in full stroke, I'd just lose. However, I do have answers. The control magic matchup is tough, but uh, that's where I'm at with Beard Force 1. This is, uh, obviously, this deck is... You know, being a theme deck in standard, it's I'm sure after I release this video, it's gonna be a worldwide sensation dominating all of your FNMs and uh the next GP, obviously Beard Force One will win. But uh uh you know, I thought I'd try to do more unique deck techs, but also I wanted to keep them competitive because while I do like flavor wins, I like real wins better. So if I can combine them that's fun so and this deck is extremely fun to play if you have the cards sleeve it up and just play because it, it makes for some pretty fun uh interaction and it has a couple different win conditions so uh i hope you guys enjoyed beard force one uh 1.0 and uh as i make changes to it i will uh update you guys i'll probably make some more changes this weekend and upload version 2.0 next week and um if you want to watch this live you can always check me out at twitch.tv slash mtg headquarters I stream constructed on Thursday nights from 7 p.m. Central till around 10 p.m. Central. Um, I usually play standard and modern. People love watching Infect, so I play Infect a lot. But I also have a modern burn deck and stuff like that that I play, and people enjoy that. But this is Beard Force 1. Have some fun with it. We'll talk to you again real soon. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, check out some of our most popular playlists from MTG Vlogs, sick gameplay videos, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. I upload three to four new Magic the Gathering videos every week, so if you haven't already, please take a moment to crush that subscribe button to join one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channels on YouTube. Talk to you later.